When in Istanbul, eat liver sheesh, that's what I say. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Wow, this like is a wet burger. It's a very classic street food. Look at that for a view. After a last minute road trip across Turkey, catching up with friends and eating lots of delicious Turkish foods, we feel sad to be leaving the south of Turkey. But the next leg of our around the world drive will be starting soon. So it's time to start the next chapter. The world is a book. And those who do not travel read only one page. Saint Augustine. It's our last morning. We're off. Good night, in. Thank you. Good night, in. Good night, in. <laughs> it's a bit early. It is early. <laughs> Thank you, Levin. Thank event. you so much. Oh, no problem. It's uh, half past six and this morning we're off to Istanbul for the next leg of the adventure. As I watched the sun peeking above the horizon, I thought how lucky we were to have a friend like Levent. Happy to get up at the crack of dawn to drive us to the airport. We'll miss him and Dalian, but one thing I do know is we'll be back. But thinking about the journey ahead, I'm just not sure when. Don't worry. Love to the family. Don't worry. You Thank will you, come back friend. again, I know. Oh, I know. Oh, we'll be back. And we'll be back. We will be here. Ah, çok teşekkürler. Always. <laughs> Is it just me or is it terrifying when you're about to put your bag on the weighing thing to see whether you've overpacked? Always, but we were there just, we had a couple of kilos spare. So we're all checked in. Uh, this morning we're flying Turkish Airlines to Istanbul. It's always sad saying goodbye to friends and leaving the place you love, but we were excited to see our friends in Istanbul again. And I'm sure there'll be lots of food involved because Turkish hospitality always involves two things food and Turkish tea. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this Turkish Airlines flight. I thought about how long it took us to drive this route whilst we were here in Trudy, our van. And yet today, we'll be arriving in Istanbul in an hour's time. The modern world really is amazing in so many ways. Dear passengers, as we are descending, make sure that your hand luggage is stored in the red bins or under the seat in front of you. Thanks, Turkish Airlines. <laughs> I will watch you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Istanbul. <laughs> okay. Bags all collected. I don't know what it is. They just seem to get heavier every time I pick them up. But uh, and we haven't bought anything. But Ursula should be uh, waiting for us outside. I may have bought something. Oh. If you don't know who Ursula is, back in lockdown when we started our 95 day stint in a car park in Istanbul, he turned up with a food parcel and we've been good friends ever since. It's Mr. Ursula. <laughs> Anava. You okay? How are you? I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> We're back. <laughs> As we took in the familiar scenery on the drive into the city, Ursula announced that he had to make a little detour to see one of his friends. Little did we know that he'd planned a bit of a surprise for us. We're going to a little mystery stop on the way to the Airbnb, and already I can see the Royal Marin upholstery. This company is actually the ones that did the upholstery on Trudy. If you've been following us for a while, Ursula very kindly gifted us a printed Tread the Globe logo to put on our tyre cover. We're going to get a new one. Whilst we were previously in Turkey, we wanted to give Trudy a makeover and contacted Royal Marine for a quote to recover all of her seats. Muharram and his team did a fantastic job. They even made us a Tread the Globe tyre cover. But when we came to pay Muharram, he refused to take a penny from us. 
Another example of amazing Turkish hospitality we experienced during our time here. It was so lovely to see him and his staff again. Merhaba! Hello, my friend. You good? <laughs> nice to see you. On the way to our Airbnb, we got stuck in what was possibly the worst traffic we'd ever seen in Istanbul. In fact, it ended up being a four hour drive. All I have to say is Ursul has some seriously good driving skills. Çok teşekkürler. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See you soon. Okay, yeah, thanks okay, Ursul. Okay. We loved the cases up three flights of stairs, but it was worth it. What a cool little apartment. There's a bed there. Right in the heart of uh, Kadikoy. Oh, it's a very cool wooden building right in the middle there. A little table we can work on. A little kitchen. Marianne's just christened the bathroom. It works. A bathroom and a master bedroom, which looks absolutely amazing. Over the past month, we've stayed in so many hotels. We've been in airports, restaurants, and cafes. And with that, we've been using public Wi-Fi. It's easy to forget sometimes that there are actually people out there trying to steal our data and passwords. And with all the shipping arrangements, we've had to do a lot of bank transfers. We never really know how secure our internet connection is. And that's why we always use Surfshark VPN when we're online. Surfshark creates an encrypted tunnel which keeps all of your data safe. Think of it like your underpants. Your underpants keep all the important bits safe, but if you went out without them, that's a whole other story. <coughs> After spending a few weeks back at home, we got into some really good British dramas. If you haven't seen Blue Lights on the BBC, you should. And usually, we have to make sure that we finish the series before we leave because you can't get normal TV when you're overseas. But with Surfshark you can, because by simply changing your virtual location, your computer thinks it's somewhere else, so you can still watch all those shows from back home. Surfshark offers three levels of membership, but I'd recommend their premium level. For just the cost of a cup of coffee, you get all their standard features, plus some really good extra ones, such as their antivirus. To get your exclusive Surfshark deal, simply click the link in the description below or scan the QR code and enter the promo code TREADTHEGLOBE. Welcome to Kadikoy here in Istanbul. It's a bit of a grey day. Today we're meeting up with a friend Tolga who's we're going to be doing a little bit of an unusual walking tour of Istanbul. He's going to show us some places that we haven't seen before. Although I'm a little bit nervous meeting up with Tolga because last time we met up with him he made Chris eat. So Akadikoy is located on the Asian side of Istanbul and uh, it's an old an old town and it's a very cool place to uh, start a walking tour. I mean, check out the graffiti in the old building. One thing you do notice walking around Istanbul is all the cafes and they've got a real sort of cafe tea culture. And uh, most people start their day with a little bit of breakfast and a nice cup of Turkish chai. I love this. There's a little cat hotel here. <laughs> That's another thing you do see a lot of in Istanbul is the Istanbul cats. Merhaba. <laughs> how are you? How are you doing, my friend? Hey, how are you? Are you good? I'm great, how are you guys? I'm good, thank you very much. Okay, so what's yeah. the plan today then? Okay, the plan is we're going to be visiting quite a few places. Okay. In Kadıköy, in Karaköy and in Istiklal. 
And a lot of food. And a lot of food. A little bit of history as well. Okay. A bit of history as nice well. food or weird food? Last time you talked about <laughs> better food. Better, better food. food. <laughs> Not weird food. Better okay. Food. <laughs> Okay. Oh. okay, we got Beiran soup. It's from the Gaziantep area. We previously tried Beiran during our time in Gaziantep, where it's traditionally served for breakfast. Rendered lamb fat, topped with rice, shredded lamb meat, and cooked with garlic, pepper paste, and lamb broth. I had no doubt that we were going to be eating a lot today, so we decided to order half portions. Even half is. A lot. I serve with rocket and bread. Amazing. So we've given it a little squeeze of lemon. I've mixed in all the spices and uh, this dish is actually the uh, speciality of the restaurant here. Ah, oh, it tasted so good. It may seem a pretty unusual way to start the day, but I absolutely loved it. And garlic. Beautiful. It's just, it's just, it, it just opens you up in the morning, you know? You, you, you eat the soup in the morning, you're like, okay. I'm awake, everything's fine, I'm all right, I'm here and I've arrived. It's a hangover cure. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I've actually never had it in the morning. <laughs> okay, so now we're, uh, we're taking a walk through, uh, through Kadikoy. And uh, the plan today is we're starting on the Asian side here and then we're going to end up on the, uh, on the European side. Oh, Kadikoy is uh, the oldest settlement uh, in Istanbul. The first people who arrived in this area in Istanbul settled in Kadıköy before the other side. And when the people came, the, the Byzantinians came to the other side, to the Asians, to the European side, then they saw that people who were living in Kadıköy, they're like, what are they doing there? You know, it's, it's a weird place. Why are you guys living there? And they called it the people of the blind people. The place of the blind people. They're like, they, they must be blind. There's a better place over here. And now Kadıköy is the happening place. It's the happening place, exactly. The Istanbul vibes in Kadıköy. We've just had uh, we've just had the most amazing breakfast, and already just walking, I'm already spotting food. Look at that. Halka. Halka. Halka means ring, as uh, making a ring there. Amazing. And then they're covered in covered in sugar, Lokma. sugar. Lokma. Oh, they're Lokma, good. That's tulumba. <laughs> I might need to go on a diet after uh, <laughs> after today. <laughs> One way you know you're in Katakoy is the famous bull statue. A bit like the one we saw in New York, but here they use it as a meeting point. So if you want to meet someone, you just say, I'll meet you at the bull. Also a good place for a selfie. Also shopping is very good in Katakoy. Yay, we are shopping! No, Marianne, that's, that's not part of the deal, Tolga. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Only eating today, no shopping. Only eating today, no shopping. You've been told. <laughs> Die first, then shop. Okay. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen a warning. Cats and dogs crossing sign. But here in Istanbul, you can see it. This is the first opera building in Turkey, built in 1927. Wow. It's a beautiful building. It, it, it was an opera house for, for the first 20, 25 years of its life. Yeah. And then it became a cinema. And then they returned it to an opera house again in 2007. When this place was a cinema back in the 80s, I saw my first movie back in 1986 when I was six years old, right here. Right and what was and it? What was it? What okay, it was? the funny story is I do remember the, 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 the movie. It's three kids who are six years old, one kid who's around two and a half, and three dads, and they took us to see Predator. You're joking. No. <laughs> That was the first movie that I saw in the cinema. <laughs> That's just a funny story. And I love all the old buildings as you walk around. You get a sense of the old and the new. And uh, instead of Guinness here, they've got greatness. <laughs> There's a little bit of a plagiarism on the word Guinness there, maybe. There is a whole Migros supermarket room here of vending machines. I think that's getting us warmed up for Japan. I think it that's might a good be. Concept. It is it. Migros 724. That's the first time I've actually seen. There one. you go. So Migros, Migros 724. They have a whole room of vending machines here. 
I'm gonna love vending machines in Japan. It's a typical Turkish shop, oh, like soaps, nuts, and the smell is amazing. There's always a couple of street dogs. You don't look very hungry. These are the two clever dogs. <laughs> They're, They're outside sat the outside the butcher's shop. And they are morbidly obese. <laughs> I just love a walk around the bazaar. It gives you a glimpse into local life and you never quite know what you're going to discover. Oh wow, look at that shot there. Look at all that. We've got dried peppers and aubergines, chilies. Oh, fantastic, look. Dolma. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? All the mezes. They got literally come and buy your little container of mezes. This is what I'm talking about. This is an old school, like, Turkish shop with everything in it. I just feel so hungry when you come into these shops. Get me out of here. <laughs> Even though we've just had breakfast. I've completely forgotten about my breakfast. I know, breakfast is gone. I'm ready for the next one. All these olives. This is absolutely amazing. Have you ever seen olives this colour? No. White. Those are my favourite olives. These ones here. Mine too. Uh, the griddled ones with lemon. Oh. Uh, I literally, I just love it. Fish. You play Saz. Ah, Saz. Ah. Raki, Raki's good for you. Ah. That's done with orange. In the middle. I love the way the shop owner just picks up a random pickle and just like hand feeds it to you. Turkey has some of the most amazing pickle shops and the magically bright window displays draw you in. I'm always fascinated to see the variety of things they're able to pickle. Pickled garlic. Yeah, pickled they, garlic. They pickle anything and everything. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So well, they've got like pickled pine cones here. Apparently if you drink the juice, it's very good for asthma. Uh, so there you go, now we're coming down. Coming down, we've got the fish section. Oh, I just love these markets, aren't they great? I can't believe the colours and the smell. And as I said, it's not fishy, I can just smell the fresh kebabs being made. Oh yeah, absolutely beautiful. What are we eating? Okay, so first of all, we're going to be eating a doner durum with cheese. Actually, it looks like potato chips. Yes, and then we're going to put yeah. chips as well. Mm. This is like a good snack. It is. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is my classic street food. And then we're going to be eating a, a wet burger. What we call it like hamburger. Is it wet? It's moist. It's not really wet. It's moist. It's moist. <laughs> I'm getting this image. We're going to be eating a soggy, moist burger. Garlicky, tomatoey, and very nice. Okay, so we have it. This like is a wet burger. Oh, it's very soft. I mean, a wet burger, it sounds really quite strange, doesn't it? But it's a thing apparently in Istanbul. Istanbul so they actually make burgers as normal and then they wrap them and put them in a steamer. The flavors are major, but the texture is really quite strange. It's like a heavy damp bun. Again, it's very good after a few drinks. I think I like the burger, but I don't like the bread. You know when you have a plate with a burger on it and you you drop your drink on it and then the bread goes all wet? It's a wet burger. It's a wet burger. The third thing is we're going to eat, be eating a, a toast. Okay, a toast, I like toast. Right? It's gonna, it's, 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 it has cow's tongue in it. Tongue? Yes. Dilli kasharlı toast, efendim. I don't know why I go out with Tolga. Last time he made me eat a sheep's intestine sandwich. Does it taste good though? But it's it's very delicious. I mean, if you don't think of it, of the part itself, okay. it's very delicious meat. It's a delicacy, really. It's a delicacy. But it actually just looks like a bit of pastrami. <laughs> if I hadn't told you what it was, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. It just looks like a bit of, so it looks like a bit of ham. No, it's good. 
the texture's a bit, the texture's a little funny. Oldest sweet shop in Istanbul. Oh la la. Stepping into the oldest family business in Turkey, it was amazing to think that they started making confectionery back in 1777. You know any business still going after that length of time must be good. The founder, Hadji Beker, was appointed as chief confectioner to the Ottoman palace by Sultan Mahmud II and awarded him a medal of honor. We felt honored to be here. They've also got amazing pastries. Looks amazing, isn't it? All of these cakes, from ghettos, eclairs. Okay, well, of course, we couldn't come into a sweet shop and not try some. So we he bought tried. He tried. just a small little selection of Turkish delights and sweets here. So we got, uh, this is Tolga's, Tolga's favorite one. Let's give it a go. Mmm. Mmm, that's lovely. It's not sticky like Turkish delight. And what I love, if you get a really good Turkish sweet or Turkish delight, they're not overly sweet. Mm. You know how you buy the cheaper ones and they're like really crazy sweet? Mm. But these ones are just like, just sweet enough to make them naughty, you know? Okay, so now we're heading towards the ferry. We're going to get a boat over to the European side. There you go, we're back on the European side and uh, oh it's beautiful, the sun's come out walking along, we got all the fishermen and now apparently we're going to go and find some something very traditional here, mussel dolma. Yes, dolma. Dolma. There, meet the jamet. His specialty is mussel. It's a very classic street food. You can have it any time of day. You can have one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, thirty, four. And it's mussels and rice? Yes, mussels and rice. Okay. This has got rice already in it. Yes. This looks just like normal mussels. Yes. Okay, what, what we do, this is what we do. We take one. Yeah. We half open it. Ah. Okay. And then you use yes. the mussel itself. Okay. Chocolate like a chocolate. spoon. Yeah. You took it, right? Then you put some lemon juice. Some lemon. Right, and then you got. And that's good. Mm, really good. Okay. That's a good one. Oh, look, I got a perfectly yeah. formed one. Okay. okay. You're going to like it. I'm going to love this. Mussels and rice. What go could for go it. wrong? <laughs> oh, it's delicious. Really good. Mussels and nice spicy rice. We stood eating mussels and watching the world go by. A must if you're in Istanbul. So after the mussels, we're coming down into the little back streets behind. And uh, they've always got so much character. They got some old school cameras here. Look at the size of these camcorders compared to the, the GoPros. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So here you go, we've come down to go up to uh, the top to Galata. Yes. We're taking the vernacular yes. railway. It's actually the un it's called the underground, the tunnel. The tunnel has been serving Istanbul's residents and visitors since its opening in 1875. That makes it the oldest existing underground train in continental Europe. And it's the second oldest in the world after the London Underground. With a capacity of 170 people, the 1.5 minute journey to the top of the hill carries 12,000 people per day. So after a few minutes, 
<laughs> we've saved our legs and we're at the top of the hill. <laughs> Good call, Tolga. <laughs> With a past career in the hotel business, I was excited to take a peek at the famous Pera Palace Hotel. Opened in 1895 to host passengers on the Orient Express train, it was the first hotel in Istanbul to have electricity and housed Istanbul's first electric lift. It was frequented by many a famous person. It's believed that Agatha Christie wrote her famous novel, The Murder on the Orient Express in room 411 which carries her name to this day. Even the father of modern Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, stayed in suite 101, which is now a museum devoted to him. Okay, so uh, we've gone from Agatha Christie's hotel to eating liver. When in Istanbul, eat liver sheesh, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> when in Istanbul, you eat like an Istanbulian. I I'm just, I'm just following the local advice. Okay, so why liver? It's just a thing. It's a thing. It's good. It's tasty. It's a thing. But it's a thing. It's, it's a thing. like a shish. It's normal. It's very normal to have liver in Turkey. In okay. Yes. And in fact, in various places, I think in, in Adana, in, in, in Turkey, in Adana, they start off the day with liver. For breakfast? Yes, for breakfast. Okay, so just when I was in doubt on what I was going to eat, Tolga's reassured me that the, the poster behind Marianne is actually a newspaper article, and this little restaurant here is voted the number one for liver shish in Istanbul. In Turkey, actually. In Turkey? Yes. Wow. Çok teşekkürler. Okay, we got some parsley, some onions, esme, yep. some bread, rocket. Okay, I love the rocket. Some mint and lemon. Wow. That's the liver. And then I noticed there's a little stand here to put your leftover skewers. How cool is that? It looks good. Okay, I'm going for it. So I'm going to take the liver. Yep. Okay, so apparently you put it in the in the bread. You take the juice from the meat. Yep. And then you pull it. It is so well marinated. You're going to like it. a little bit of esme, onion, and sumac. There you go. First time I've eaten liver since I was a child. Bon appetit. It's good. I'm actually going to taste the liver on its own. That's what I'm going to do now, in fact. I'm going to be taking the liver. It's pretty nice. So heading up towards Taksim, we've got the uh, we've got the Taksim tram there. Very iconic to Istanbul. We're not used to seeing it this busy because every time we've been here, it's been during the pandemic. <laughs> so. Normally these streets are really quiet with nobody else on them. We had Istanbul all to ourselves. We did, literally. Tolga wanted to show us what he claimed was one of the best views in the whole of Istanbul. We eagerly looked through the side of the lift as it climbed, waiting for that ultimate reveal. It didn't disappoint. Hello. Hello. Oh, Chuck is there. I think it's glorious. Yeah, look at that for a view. You can film from here as well. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. What a spot. Sipping on Turkish coffee, we looked out at the view. And yes, it was the best view I'd seen in Istanbul. You just can't beat local knowledge. So we've come out onto the balcony of uh, where we've just had coffee. You don't often get views like this, look. Looking down on the main street there. What a view. So walking down this hill, it's pretty steep. And it's, uh, it's definitely a good call to get the, the train thing up and walk down. I think you guys walked up the last time, right? We did. And we nearly died. <laughs> it's never good. 
these are the type of uh, roads when we're in Trudy we come down and we go oh whoops we took a wrong turn <laughs> Quite a few things. Oh wow. If there's one style of restaurant in Turkey I love is the Lakantas. Home cooked dishes cooked fresh from recipes passed down through generations. So after heading back to Kadikoy, we had to visit Yan Yali Femi Lakantasi, one of the oldest in Istanbul. It was founded in 1919 by Femi Efendi. He was not a cook himself, so he made Hussein Effendi of Bolu head chef, who had previously worked at the Ottoman Palace kitchens. With its selection of traditional Ottoman and Turkish dishes, it's still run by the third generation of the same family. Our grandson. Grandson. My grandfather, my uncle and my father. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Yes, my cousin. This is Femi Mishi. Ah. Oh. Grandson of Femi. The guy who found the place. Wow. In 1919? 1919. And it's still going? Yes. Because it's so good. That's why. <laughs> the food looks amazing. Okay, we have got a serious spread here. Okay, this is a special kind of kofte. Kofte? Uh, it's with rice and meat. Rice and meat yes. kofte, of okay. With puree. And then we've got a stuffed pepper. Stuffed pepper, that's right. We have stuffed vine leaves. Beautiful. Uh, that's aubergine with meat. Ooh. That's creamy aubergine. I love, I love that. I that, love that, that looks good. great. Uh, this is um, cabbage. cabbage. Cabbage, stuffed cabbage. Stuffed cabbage, exactly. And you've got like a, a meat, meat stew. Yep, meat stew. And that's spinach. Spinach. And it looks absolutely delicious because we haven't eaten enough today, guys, have we? We can, we can never have enough. <laughs> never. never. And we've also got some, uh, some yogurt and some delicious homemade bread there. I don't like generally, I no. don't like dolma because they're quite bland. But that is the most flavoursome dolma I've ever had. Try a bit of the meat stew. Mm. Oh, that is so tender. Just when we thought we really couldn't eat any more, the owner bought us some more treats. I'm just going to have a little bit because I'm so um, full. I so we've got, is this, this, is this a house speciality? Wow. Special. <laughs> it's a uh, like liver, yeah. fried liver, as a little after dinner. Mm. Oh, it's good. That's very tender. Mm. Very tender. Down the hatch, Olga. <laughs> He's so full. Take the one for the team. You see, as we said. Turkish people are feeders. We just had a huge dinner, they and they wanted luck. they wanted to share some extra. <laughs> and then just when, when we say that, dessert comes out. Oh no! Look, look on top. Oh, it's a love heart. <laughs> You will tell me what is it. Have you guys had this one before? This was... Uh, yeah, we'll start from this one. What, what is this called? It's Ch chicken breast. Tofu. Chicken, chicken breast. breast. For Inter pudding. Tofu. Yes. Chicken breast. For pudding. Yes. But okay. It's delicious. But you're not going to be tasting the chicken much. Okay. Chicken for pudding. That's the first for me. But hey, let's give it a go. It's absolutely delicious. It actually tastes like a very sweet... Um, Almost a rice pudding, but the consistency is much thicker. You wouldn't know is chicken in, in that at all. I'm going to try this one because... Kadaif. Kadaif, because I had the great opportunity and privilege to make it when we visited the eastern part of Turkey. Mm. <laughs> it's so good. Sweet. Sticky, honey, it's just delicious. Okay, the quince. I've never had this before. Mm. What's the flavour? <laughs> quince. <laughs> what does it taste no, like? I've never eaten it. It's a quince. really intense, um, fruity flavour, similar. 
It's a cross between a pear and a raspberry. Does really? that make sense? Not at all. In my palate is going, it's like a raspberry flavoured pear. Dogger, my friend, thank you very much for a fabulous day. It was great, man. It was we'll awesome. We'll see you in a year's time. I have lost the ability to speak, though. <laughs> <laughs> we ate too much. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure to see you guys.